This tutorial will show you how to make this nursing necklace. This is for an adult to wear, but the baby plays with it. It helps keep distracted babies focused on eating, or it gives baby something safe to grab onto instead of your hair or your glasses. I'm going to show you how to make each of these individual components, and you can mix and match them, use them however you like. You can even omit the necklace part and just make it as a small toy. I'm going to be using cotton yarn. You can use any kind of yarn that you like. Um, just remember that this is likely going in baby's mouth, so you want to make sure it's not too fuzzy, and you want to make sure it's something that's washable. And the hook I'm using is a size G hook. You can use any similar sized hook. To start, I'm going to make the necklace part, and this is pretty simple. It's just a chain. I'm going to chain around 125. You don't have to count your chains, you just want to make a chain that's long enough that you can slip this over your head. You want to take your time and go slow so that your chains are nice and even. A lot of times when you're chaining it's not critical because you, once you crochet into it it's hidden, but because you're going to actually see this chain it would be worthwhile just to make sure you're going as um, evenly as you can. And if you crochet pretty loosely you might want to go down in a hook size and focus on crocheting a little bit tightly just so that your chain is nice and compact and neat. Okay, now, now I'm going to make the ring and most of these components start the same way. They're just tubes so um, the ring is just a long tube that's rolled into a ring and the other parts are just short tubes. You can make long or short tubes um, and I'll show you a couple different ways to do that. But to start, you're just going to chain 5. And then I'm going to single crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. And you're going to do it to form a ring. So this is similar to how you would start other um, projects in the round where you would slip stitch here, but instead of a slip stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over, and pull through two. So that's the first single crochet, and it's in your first um, chain. Now we're going to put a single crochet in each chain, so I have four more chains to work into. And you want to go under two loops. Some people go over um, two different loops than I do. I go over the top two loops that make the V. You can do it however you want, just under two loops, and put one single crochet in each chain. So that's two. Three. Four. And one more. It's five. Now working into chains are difficult to begin with, but working in this small um, circle is even more difficult. But once you get the chains in, working into the single crochets, um, so this is the first single crochet that we did that actually joined the ring, once you work into the single crochets it's a little bit easier, and then once your tube starts to grow and you actually have something to hold on to, then it goes much quicker. So we're just going to keep going around and around, spiraling around. We're not joining um, and chaining one to make rows. We're just going to spiral around and around and around. So just put one single crochet in each stitch. And as long as you keep the right number of stitches, then your tube will grow out straight. If it starts to taper, or flare out, then you may have skipped or added stitches. So if you notice that, or if you just want to check yourself, you can um, count your stitches around every once in a while and just make sure you still have five or whatever number of stitches you started out with. Now you can see how it's a little bit easier because I have something to actually grab onto. And my hook's coming from the inside of the tube. I find that it's easier, especially for this very small um, circle, just because if you go from the outside you have to go around a wider angle and uh, your tension ends up getting um, pulled all out of shape. So I like to go from the inside. 
If you make a larger tube, you can flip it and go from the outside. And I'll show you that when I do the beads. But you're just going to continue crocheting around and around until your tube is as long as you want it for the size of the ring that you want. Okay, so now my tube is as long as I want it. And you can see how it would look when you just um, form it into a ring like that. So I'm going to fasten off. And to do that, okay, to fasten off, um, since we had been doing single crochets, I want to step down just to make it a more gradual ending. So I'm going to step down from the single crochet into a slip stitch. So the last stitch is just a slip stitch. And then I fasten off. You want to leave a nice long tail. And clip your thread. And this tail is what you're going to use to sew your tube into a ring. Um, before you sew it though, if you want to put a mini ring, so like this one has this other mini ring, you could put one, you could put two, you could put several, you could make these wide or narrow, however you want it, but if you're going to put one on, you want to add it before you sew this up. So let's make the mini ring next. So the mini ring starts pretty much the same way as all the other tubes, but we're going to start with a chain 12 and that just makes it wide enough to go around the tube and slides around so the baby can play with it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so just like before, we're going to single crochet into the twelfth chain from the hook to form a ring. So I inserted my hook into the, the first chain that we made, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two. So now I'm just going to put a single crochet in each of the chains around. Once I get back to this point, I'll just keep adding single crochets around and around and around. Now once you've gone all the way around and put a single crochet in each chain, then I'm just going to continue um, adding single crochets, one in each stitch. And just like before, I'm going from the inside of the ring, like that. For these wider ones, you could flip it inside out like that, or right side out, whichever way you look at it, and you could crochet from the outside. It doesn't really matter. Um, the stitches will end up looking a little bit different, but you may prefer one look over the other, or you may prefer doing it one way or another. I think it's easier to do it from the inside, but it just depends on how you want to do it. I'll flip mine back the way I had it originally. And then for these mini rings that are going to be on the other ring, I like them to be pretty narrow, just so that they fit on the ring and they can slide on the ring easily. For these narrow um, mini rings or beads, however you want to call them, uh, I think that it's best if you stop right where you started. So this was where we started. This is where our um, ring was joined when we first started doing the single crochet. So this is the short tail that we started with. So I'm going to end right there just to make it a little bit more even. The longer your bead, the less that's noticeable and the less of a problem it is. Um, but for these narrow ones, I do like to stop right at the beginning. So there's two full rows of single crochets. Okay, And then just like the other ones, I'm just going to do the last stitch as a slip stitch and then fasten off. and you want to weave in your loose ends just to make it nice and neat. And when you're weaving in your loose ends, if you have kind of a gap or a bump, because this is done in the spiral, so you might have a bump. You see how? Because it uh, goes up there. When you're weaving in your loose ends, you can kind of um, fudge that area and sort of um, 
make that bump a little bit less noticeable if you just sort of go back and forth in that area uh, while you're hiding your ends. So it's more uh, even or flat there. And then just go around several times to hide your ends. Try and do a secure job because this is going to be um, washed and used a lot. Okay, so now once you have your mini ring finished, just going to thread it onto your big ring. And you could do multiple um, mini rings on your ring or you could leave them off altogether. Um, but once you have what you want on there, just going to hold your ring together like this. And using these tails, you're going to whip stitch this ring together. So the last component is just these beads. And just like everything else, these are just tubes. These started with a chain 7, and just like everything else, single crocheted in the spiral until they were as long as you wanted. And like we've already um, done those twice before, I'm not going to show you this, but I'll show you some examples of some finished beads. So we got little short stubby ones, and some longer ones. <laughs> These two are the same, um, only this red one was flipped, so you can see how the stitches look a little bit different. So with the green one, you're... <laughs> Your hook went from the inside like that when you were crocheting, and for the red one, your hook went from oops, from this side. Your hook went from the outside in, and then it's it's not no, so noticeable on the solid colored beads, but I did some spiral beads, and you can see. Do it this way. This one was from the inside. This one was from the outside, and then you could do some two tone beads. Um, so for this one, I just started a bead, and once I got to as long as I wanted the color, I fastened off, and then just attached a new color and added several more rows. You could also, uh, you know, reattach the other color so it's kind of just like a stripe in the bead. Um, but like I said, these are just tubes, so we've done those before, but I will show you the spiral bead because it's a little bit different. Okay, so for the spiral bead, we're going to start just the same way. <coughs> For this one, I'm going to do chain of seven. So I'm going to start with the first color. So that's chain seven. And then single crochet into the seventh chain from the hook. And in the next three chains. So you want to go about halfway. So since this was chain seven, I'll do the first four in yellow. So that was one, two, three, four. Okay. And now we're going to let go of the yellow, but we're not fastening off. So pull up a big loop and we're going to attach the blue. If you watched my spiral rainbow swirls hat video or my um, spiral um, mittens or baby mittens video, then this is going to be familiar for you. But we're just going to attach the blue into the next chain. So I just put my hook under the two loops. I'm going to hold the blue from the back yarn over and pull up to attach the blue. Now I'm going to chain one just so that it's secure and then I'm going to single crochet in that same spot. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when I come around with the yellow it's going to be hard to single crochet into that chain one. Um, so I'm going to put a single crochet there. So that's your first single crochet and that's in your fifth chain. <coughs> And then we'll put another blue one in the sixth chain. And in the seventh chain. Okay, so now the next stitch that we come to is the first yellow single crochet. 
So we'll just put a single crochet in that. And then in the next one, and you're just going to keep crocheting with the blue until you run out of stitches. So that's pretty much all of the stitches left. So I'm going to pull up a big loop on the blue. I'm going to re-pick up the yellow and make sure you're pulling your loop tight down on your hook so you have a good tension. And then I'm just going to crochet with the yellow into the first blue single crochet. And then in the next blue single crochet. And then in the next one. And you can only do probably about three or four stitches before you run out of stitches. Just because this is kind of a tight um, spiral. But you just pull up the yellow pick up the blue, pull down your loop down onto the shaft of your hook, and then continue with the blue. So that's how you do the spiral, and like I said, you can make it as long as you want. Just keep um, doing this all the way around. And if you want it to look like this, just keep going. If you want it to look like this, then you would flip it. You want to make sure you flip before you get too far along or else it's just difficult. So once you have your bead as long as you want, just like we fastened off the mini ring, just make the last stitch a slip stitch. And then fasten off. And then I like to make the colors finish opposite each other. I think it just makes it look more balanced. So make this one, last stitch a slip stitch, and then fasten off. And that's how you make a spiral bead. Once you have all your components made, now we just need to assemble the necklace. So I'm just going to thread these beads onto the necklace. And you could use your crochet hook to help you thread these on, especially if you have longer beads. Um, you just insert your hook, snag the necklace, and pull it through. So once I have my beads on, I'm just going to tie the necklace closed. So I'm just going to hold the two ends together like this, tie an overhand knot, and pull it tight. And I'll clip these, um, clip these so they're nice and even. Okay. Now to put the ring on, I want to put it right in the center between these two beads. So I'm going to take this loop, insert it into the ring, reach through the loop, and pull the necklace and the beads and everything through. Like that. And you can put this right over that seam sort of hide the seam where we join this ring and then these beads go down on either side and your nursing necklace is complete. So like I said you can use any of these components or all of them. Um, you could omit what you don't like or uh, if you wanted to just make a ring like this with a couple of these mini rings or you could link several of these rings together. You can make these larger or smaller and just make it as a toy without the necklace. So there's a lot of ways that you can use this. Um, if you make this pattern, I'd love to see how you make yours. So um, you can leave some pictures on my Facebook page, or if you put pictures on your Ravelry project page, I always see them there. So I'd love to see how you use this pattern. Um, you might also be interested, I have another similar pattern for baby teethers made with cotton yarn that you could put in the freezer and um, they're nice and soothing on baby's gums. So I'll put a link to that pattern in the description box and on the screen in an annotation as well. And thanks so much for watching.